The federal government's anti-graft agency, the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission and the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation have begun investigation and audit of state governments, agencies and personnel who spent the COVID-19 funds from the government and private individuals. The office said the internal audit procedures would apply to all transactions relating to the COVID-19 funds and reports will be forwarded to its audit monitoring department. The AGF, Ahmed Idris added that any ministry, department or agency that contravened the guidelines would be sanctioned and the names of such MDAs and its principal officers would be made public as a measure of transparency. They stated this during a virtual meeting of stakeholders on the COVID-19 funds management and monitoring. Still with us in the studio is legal practitioner Libora Soshoma. Thank you very much for staying with us. My pleasure. I will be joined in a bit by political analyst Lulu Elegbe. We'll get to him when he does join. Now, should we be despondent that, I mean, even in the midst of a pandemic, we're talking about monitoring funds, ensuring that there is no fraud or diversion? Yeah, because, uh, you know, um, ours is a very sad situation, a situation where we want to take advantage of every opportunity, no matter how, you know, how, how um, uh, ridiculous it sounds. Um, some people have said that even with um, the figures that there is a, a COVID industry, that is thriving now in Nigeria, and a lot of people are making money from government from it. And as I speak to you, there is um, there are allegations and counter allegations from NDDC of funds allegedly spent to sensitize people on COVID. And then you begin to wonder, you know, if the entire federal government didn't spend that much to sensitize people. Then, secondly, also, as we speak, there are also allegations that people, some governments, received inflated figures. COVID, the figures of patients in their state just to receive funds. There are also allegations that most ministries, parastatals and agencies just are dipping their hands in the uh, in, in their account, all in the name of COVID sensitization and you know buying of face masks and you know protective gears for you. Know, so all of this, a lot of people as. The economy is locked down. Some people are crying and, 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 and dying of hunger. There are a lot of people who are smiling to the bank daily. Even the sharing of palliatives till date is still shrouded in secrecy and, and mystery. Well, we, 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 so we have a system. All of this, we have, we have there guidelines. Is there we, is, we, they they just have, alluded to it that there are guidelines that what, might be broken. Why is it that there are ch times when what, these guidelines are broken? Why can't we follow through why with I the say, system? Why I say there are no system. What we have here are superhumans. And we are not even trying to create any system. You just roll out guidelines and, and expect that you know, people will comply. Yeah, but the guidelines sense, are meant to you guide. Know why, do you know why people comply with guidelines? Because there is a monitoring and enforcement of compliance. Mm -hmm. But here, we just roll out those guidelines and we go to sleep. Couldn't Only this be the realize, monitoring aspect that we're looking at now and it looks like there is some healing? No, you, 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 this is not a monitoring. This is an afterthought. Because you had them, um, you know, people are, are shouting that a lot of things are not properly done, and so money have been mismanaged, and so that's why you now say, okay, we want to probe how these funds were spent. The monitoring, what's monitoring? As you are releasing these funds, you ensure that you know you, at every turn, you know what it is meant. Once money is budgeted, it is deemed appropriated. You know, once that money is appropriated, what it is meant for, immediately there's a report. You don't wait for, you know, a month later to begin to collate or, or monitor how this money was spent. Knowing fully where the kind of people you have in these organizations, I expect that once these monies are released, there ought to be a feedback a feedback system where daily report on spending of this fund. Some people can say, well, this uh, just came on us and then we're not prepared for it. We are not talking about the issue of preparation. We're talking about the issue of guidelines for spending public funds. And so it is the same thing with the budgeting system. It is also the same thing with um, uh, management of uh, crisis 
So is the same thing with the management it, of this pandemic. Okay, it, it, it just I think it's a little related. The issue of the Abacha loots, where we have 18 uh, CSO groups rather coming to say that they want to monitor um, um, the use of that fund. So how can we balance it? So we have like maybe a unified monitoring body for some of these public expenditure. As against this, you know, we set up this committee here today to monitor, or we set up that committee to monitor. No, no. Every every system. Take the banks for example you have a regulator within the bank there's what they call inspectorate de department the inspectorate they ensure that they follow processes and and so if there is any breach you could know the department to go to okay there's inspectorate and so we ensure that inspectorate will trace this is their job but here when you spend funds after spending funds you just suddenly realize that oh people are complaining and things are not you, you know right somewhere you set up a committee look for people and then that same committee also will find opportunity to make something out of that problems and, and at the end of the day and that's why it's this ad hoc monitoring won't work like you said have a system where as you're disbursing funds the processes of spending this fund is transparent why did we introduce cashless policy to ensure that funds are monitored. But a situation where these same funds are disbursed in questionable circumstances and there are no follow-ups. If, if, for example, I disburse one millionaire to a department and they say they want to purchase so and so and so P PPE, I know the cost of the PPE in the market. And then we have a department that, you know, it's a protocol department or whatever you want to call it, that looks through this and ensure that once money is moves, most money is transferred from one account to the other, they know, oh, this money moves from this account to this other account. And so this account belongs to this person and this is what they do. But a situation where you allow people to spend money, in some cases, maybe money is withdrawn and, and shared, you know, um, uh, in hard currency, like we saw with um, the palliatives. It becomes very difficult to monitor. Even at the end of the day, you sit, set up a panel, people are going to make money from the panel, and then eventually a report comes up. Like they said, these people's name will be published. No, Nobody this will be public, prosecuted. Public allegation is something we've become almost used to. There is very loud allegations, accusations, but oftentimes we don't get to see the end result of said investigation. The National Assembly just recently was accused of padding the NDDC budget, and we have a situation where the federal government is seeking an additional 5.5 billion naira loan to help with the COVID-19 fight. What should be our focus when it comes to you know, ensuring that these monies are used for what they're saying they're going to use, be used for, and that the National Assembly, it's not always in the news, and they bring out, you know, comprehensive reports based on these, um, their fine fact mission on whether the allegations of fraud or corruption is proven or not, and the steps to which they used to get there. The, the, the issue is, uh, this, you know, your question is hydra-headed, I will attempt to uh, you know, um, answer, you, you know, from taking from the last to the first. Take the National Assembly, for example. Most of the politicians that go to the National Assembly be believe that the National Assembly, you know, is an opportunity to make money. And so that's why you always hear of counter allegations and counter allegations of bribery, of inducement, um, vote for uh, uh, cash for budget, cash for screening, and padding. Including the NDDC, remember also there have been allegations and counter allegations. I did say that the Interim Management Committee had accused the National Assembly. The National Assembly had insisted on going ahead with the investigation. And yet, one would have expected that there should be an independent body. The uh, Interim Management Committee is an independent body, but as we speak, also is also emerging in controversy, bribery, inflation of um, budget. Um, environment and these same COVID-19 funds. I talked about five billion for sensitization. Okay. It's the same thing with every parastata in, in government. So a situation where you don't have a process, a, and a, a monitoring processes and enforcement of sanctions, strict sanctions and prosecutions of offender, you're just going to have a situation where names are going to be called and then they say they are being witch hunted because of their stance and the matter died down until another one happens. All right, I, I'm, I'm told we have Lulu Elegue on um, with us. Thank you for joining us.
Hi, good morning. Thank you for having good me. Good morning. What's your quick thoughts on this issue of transparency when it comes to uh, implementation of monies allocated for, you know, interventions, uh, infrastructure, what have you? Yeah, so I think it's, they're not, they're not, all these issues are not mutually exclusive, unfortunately, because whether it's funds for um, relief, whether it's funds for fighting COVID-19, whatever it is, um, we have an issue with transparency across the board. So I don't think it's going to be any different because it's COVID-19, unfortunately, even though you would think that, uh, rather you would hope that something to do with um, public health would at least um, be taken a lot more seriously or at least be people that um, do these kinds of things would at least draw a line there, but clearly that's not happening. Um, so it's not, it's not, there's nothing surprising about it. Um, it's just, I think it's just, on, it's just really unfortunate that even public health, a public health, um, a global pandemic isn't spared that lack of transparency and all the attendant issues that come with that lack of transparency. Okay, well, why are we looking at probing? Because what it is now is the um, Office of the Attorney General is going to, you know, check and audit all the um, expenditure and, you know, monies that has been disbursed. What about looking mm -hmm. at preventive measures? Shouldn't that be more sufficient than probing? Yeah, I think, but either way, it has to be, I think it has to be a combination of both. So there has to be preventive measures. And then there has to be, whether it's probing, whether someone has to be held to account is the bottom line. So, yes, there needs to be um, prevention of these things in the first place. So there needs to be processes in place that makes it, it won't stop it. Let's not fool ourselves, but at least make it, at least makes it a bit more difficult for these things to happen. But where things um, slip through the cracks, they need, there also needs to be sanctions, there needs to be consequences because... 90% of our problem in Nigeria is a lack of consequences. People do things because simply because they know they're going to get away with it. It's that simple. So there needs to be a disincentive from these sorts of things. And when that doesn't happen, then it doesn't matter how much preventive steps, because if you take preventive steps and they don't work, if you don't have adequate um, sanctions or ad adequate consequences to go with um, to go with it when these things happen, then it, it wouldn't make that much of a difference. So it has to be a combination of both. Okay, so post COVID nineteen, do you see us still, you know, explain how these monies were spent, or with this move by the Office of the Attorney General, uh, we wouldn't have to do that? Well, I think there will, there will always be those questions, unfortunately, because the, first of all, when we say post-COVID-19, that's still, um, from everything we can oh, no. see, that's still a while away. Um, but even after, the, even if COVID-19 ends tomorrow, there's always going to be those questions of, okay, X money was um, allocated for this, Y amount of stuff was done, where's this money, where's that money? These are recurrent themes within the public space in Nigeria. It's, it's not new, unfortunately. So even post COVID-19, we're going to have these questions, unfortunately. Will anything be done? I honestly don't have any confidence that anything will be done if they find out that um, certain monies were not accounted for because we don't have a history of doing anything when these things happen. So I'm not expecting it to be, I, I hope I'm wrong. But I'm not expecting any different. In we join case. you in that hope. Thank you very much, Lulu, for coming on the news. Thank you very much. So, in uh, final thoughts on this. Yeah, um, <laughs> I I also do not hope that um, anything will change because um, here people we a lot of people are. It's when a country where people are waiting for their turn you know, to have a bite from government funds, unfortunately. Uh, and, and so when, anytime you're given an opportunity or assignment in government, people see it as an opportunity to also take a bite from public fund, which is quite unfortunate. And so we also celebrate mediocrity and, um, you know, um, support. Um, we, are, we, are more, we are easily carried away when it comes to public funds. And we, we also uh, we like, you know, noise. We're, we're a noise-making set of people. Uh, and so 
this will come you don't be surprised that at the end of the day some persons will be identified as having you know uh, mismanage this public fund. The best that but you would don't happen, seem to have much hope in the. I don't even that have any. Auditing. The worst that would happen would be, you know, they would go settle from what they had collected, and then all of this would die down. The report would come out that yes, you know, the probe had been uh, conducted and everything was properly spent. And then, a few days or weeks later, we we'll borrow another money. We we'll mortgage the future of our generations unborn, and then for poor people to. Or at the end of the day, collectively put it in their pocket. That and that's why we are where we are. Thank you very much for your thoughts. My pleasure.